Hello everybody and welcome to the first episode of the Esports Talk Show, the place you guys can go for your weekly esports news. Now for the first start of the show, we do want to make uploads on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and we're going to try and cover some of the most popular esports out there. With this being in mind, we will be covering for the first few weeks six esports, CSGO, Dota 2, Fortnite, League of Legends, Overwatch, and Rocket League. So welcome to the show. If you guys are a new viewer, make sure to subscribe for more content in the future. And as always, let's get into it. And for CSGO news this past weekend, we had a huge roster change for the MIBR roster. That was Tark replacing Bolts on the roster going forward. Now, a bit of an argument going back as to what this MIBR roster wants to do in the future, as it does stand for Made in Brazil, but they are now a 40% American roster. But nonetheless, they have finalized their five-man team, which should be going to the major. As we do have speculation, Cold Zero taking back his statements about wanting to leave that roster maybe in the future. No one knows whether that was true or not, but we'll find out after the major time around. They have now solidified their final five and left Cloud9 seemingly in shambles. Of course, Tark has now been reunited with his former Cloud9 teammate as well as Stewie2K, but Cloud9 left pretty much with a permanent only three-man roster and still looking for an IGL. Speculation and rumors out there point towards two of their stand-in players they've used in the past or at least been practicing with, and that will be Sticko alongside former Fnatic Golden to fill that IGL spot. But either way, we actually had CEO Jack confirm Cloud9 will continue in CSGO until at least, of course, they still have their major spot. We'll see what the future of Cloud9 is, but certainly left in shambles after this trade. Now, also in big news, as we approach the face major September we do have the minors still going on with the Asian minors happening this week we've already seen a pretty big upset with a few a uh, few teams out there the first of which is the first ever Japanese team to not only make it this far in the minor or the major process at, at all but also to make it to playoffs and have a chance to be the first ever Japanese team out of the Asian scene to make it to a major that's actually team SC absolute they've already had a few upset matches today they've already made the playoffs for that minor with upsets over renegades in a best of one as well as VG flash in a best of three and they are now one step closer not only being being the first Japanese team to make it this far, but as well as the first Japanese team to also get some CSGO stickers. So really cool to see some upsets going through. Of course, for the whole minor system right now, only the American minor has concluded. We still have the CIS European and Asian scene to send their two teams to the major qualifier, and we have yet to see if SC Absolute will be the first Japanese team to do so. And in Dota 2 news out there, we continue to track the prize pool, of course, for this year's International 8. And of course, the big question out there in the air right now is, are we going to surpass TI7's prize pool of just short of $25 million? Now, given current projections, it seems like it's going to be a very close call, and Valve is doing everything they possibly can, especially given this TI, uh, to actually make that mark. So it does seem, in my own opinion, we're going to break the $25 million mark, but just barely. And the question is, how far past it can we really go? And people do need to remember, this year's a bit special compared to last year, as this year's International starts nearly two weeks later than last year's TI7. TI7 last year started around August 2nd, and this year won't start until the 15th, so the more accurate representation and projection on screen for all of you, it does put us just past that $25 million mark. And again, like I said before, the big question is, how much farther past it can we go? And either way, I really don't see this being a big issue, unless a lot of people out there are kind of judging the prize pool by how the game is doing, and they see if we don't raise as much money for this international as the last one, that the game is dying. Not necessarily the case as well, because we did have a huge spark last year as well, and on top of that, we can expect a huge huge surgency maybe sometime soon with the Immortal Treasure 3 release hopefully coming this week or sometime next and after that we're going to ride it out into the international in August and actually see if we can pass that 25 million dollar mark so do you guys think we're going to make it I don't think 30 million is really in the spotlight right now and Valve is again trying to do everything they possibly can they started this year's battle bundle a bit earlier as well as the international now pushed back two weeks later it does seem we're going to make it but for the future of Dota 2 prize pools that's what's really in question right now but also in terms of roster changes out there not too many going on with our lucky 18 teams getting ready to prepare for that TI this year. We actually have one team making changes though, and unfortunately enough, it will be Team Empire after failing to make and actually qualify for TI8. They've gotten rid of two members in the past seven days, and that will be FN and Ghostic, and they're actually looking to replace both of those players, but unfortunately enough, they will not be playing for Empire any longer. So any other roster changes that are going to happen are probably not going to happen to those lucky 18 teams out there because they are competing for our International 8 in August. And with Fortnite Season 5 being released last week, we saw a continued response and, of course, another surge in the game's popularity in the Battle Royale scene, but some big updates also coming with the season's release, the first of which was the game's very first vehicle, and that being the ATK or the All-Terrain Cart. If you guys in the squad want to actually team up and join in and use the cart itself, it's been a great, uh, actually, new update to the game, and the game's first ever vehicle is now in play. Now, on top of that, a bunch of portals are popping up all over the map, although they are not currently ATK, ATK compatible, so be careful if you and a squad do want to actually drive through 
through there. They do teleport you to brand new locations all across the map, but they do so by actually teleporting you into the air. So of course the ATK is not compatible. It cannot fly yet as of right now, and it can actually lead to a lot of squad deaths out there. But also some big updates happening in terms of weaponry out there. We saw two huge nerfs and one buff out there. The first two nerfs coming to the double pump shotgun strategy, and alongside that the Silence SMG also receiving nerfs at distance as well as with the damage that'll be on screen for all of you. But of course the, the notable double pump strat strategy out there has now been, uh, I guess you could say nerfed if not taken away entirely with a new pump shotgun timer. You cannot shoot that shotgun again until that timer as you guys can see on screen with the circle actually goes off. So it seems some great nerfs coming in handy but also a big buff to the other heavy shotguns out there. It does seem they now fire 10 pellets instead of 5 and with every uh, pellet that actually hits your enemy it does scale in damage. So we've seen some big clips out there of the heavy shotguns being uh, receiving a pretty well known buff out there. A, a much needed buff I would say but also some much needed nerfs to the silence FNGs and of course that double pump strategy. We see continued updates based on what we actually want for feedback and also on top of that most importantly we have yet to see updates to the actual restrictions on mats. So it does seem going forward Epic Games continue to listen to what we want in the game. What's going to be next though? That's the big question. And besides LPL and EU prevailing at Rift Rivals just last weekend, and of course all the pro players taking their chance now to actually talk trash about North American League of Legends, maybe we'll talk about that in a future episode. We did have this past weekend some updates for all of you in the standings for both LCS and LCK. So we'll start, of course, with the LCS guys. Some big notable wins out there, first of which was actually CLG sweeping uh, both of their matches, one against Echo Fox as well as Cloud9, and also Golden Guardians picking up two important victories, guys, and those were actually against Clutch Gaming and 100 Thieves. Now, 100 Thieves continue to actually go with Onda after losing Meteos last week and it does seem to be a bit of a struggle for that roster going forward but again some very big wins there for Golden Guardians and much needed in the standings. Now every other team in the NALCS actually split their series besides Optic Gaming who actually managed to lose both their matches and continue to sink down in those rankings and of course going forward with this lineup has been a bit of a struggle throughout the split so far. They actually lost both their matches one to Clutch as well as to Liquid and we're going to see if any changes are going to come sometime soon with their subs. They have definitely the depth of the roster but I think we all can agree we've seen a struggling roster throughout the entire split so far. Will they make changes? Are changes needed? We think maybe sometime soon. But also, we also had, of course, the LCK going on. Some big changes going on there as well with the results. And an EU LCS is actually Misfits continuing their undefeated streak, now moving to 8-0 and actually proving their solidified spot at the number one spot in the split so far, taking very important victories as well over G2 and Vitality. So big wins coming from them and actually really proving themselves to be the best team in the split so far. Now also, vice versa, we have H2K continuing their winless streak. They now now moved to 0-8 with two more losses to Vitality and UOL. Now also very importantly, we have FC Schalke coming away with two very important victories here, one over Giants and one over as well as Splice, and two important victories keeping them in the middle of these split standings. So also on top of that, we have Fnatic continue to actually press Whippo forward as Reckless we found out last week, according to Travis Gafford, benched himself on that team, giving himself more time to learn new champions or maybe even step away from the game itself. It does seem Fnatic going forward will continue to actually use Whippo and Reckless will continue on that bench. So some big things happen in EU as well, but also on top of that we have big things coming for LCK. With both Gen G and of course Gen Air being the only two teams this week to actually take both of their matches, Gen G continuing to impress teams and actually hold their rankings so far throughout, but Gen Air of course one of their wins did come against Team BBQ who no team has actually lost to this split, but nonetheless uh, some big notable wins there as well for the Team Gen Air. We also had Hanwha Life go 2-1 and one for their series. Their only loss was actually to uh, Gen G. On top of that though they took wins against KT as well as the struggling SKT roster. So again, some big changes coming soon uh, for these rankings so far as we kind of solidify those top four teams in and out. We have only a few teams now going each and every week actually winning most of their other matches. So some big changes happening sometime soon and some of those changes could be to King's Own Dragon X. We of course had news last week about their team making an announcement, searching for five new players. It does seem that was actually widely misinterpreted as it does seem of course King's Own Dragon X doing just fine as a roster during this split so far. It does seem they're actually looking to make maybe an academy roster or also maybe sign up to five substitute players the main roster will continue and a kind of a misinterpretation of rumors there they are not trying to replace the main roster they might be looking for an academy team most notably or maybe up to five subs and of course this past weekend we had Overwatch League playoffs begin in what you could call two upset matches for the quarterfinals, although throughout four stages both these teams in both quarterfinal matchups had definitely their runs. You could call these up slight upsets at least though, the first of which was the Philadelphia Fusion taking down Boston Uprising, especially after though Boston Uprising some questionable map choices. But even more importantly though, I would guess I would call personally the bigger upset of the two. We had the London Spitfire taking down, of course that was the LA Gladiators. After an opening match loss, they reverse swept them and actually won six maps straight to take the 
the series. And again, these are going to be best of five series, three best of fives. It will be a best of three match series, but it'll be three best of fives in that best of three, if that makes any sense at all. We also had, of course, the semifinals will start this Wednesday. And with that, we will have the LA Valiant taking on the London Spitfire, who are going off, not to forget, a six map win streak here. So definitely some hype coming around that team. And it will, of course, be the Philadelphia Fusion facing off against the one and only New York Excelsior. Who you guys think is going to win? Leave a comment down below. Some definitely going to need some upset potential if Philadelphia wants to come away with that one, as New York is by far and away our favorite heading into the playoffs. Now, bouncing off that, though, even more importantly, we did actually forget to mention last week, the fundraiser has ended for the Mercy Skin and T-shirt sales, and you guys were outstanding. The entire community coming together and actually raising $12.7 million, not only in skin sales, but as well as shirt sales. An additional $130,000 was raised through streaming donations for Breast Cancer Research Foundation. An absolutely amazing response coming from you guys. To all of you guys who contributed, thank you so much. And that was amazing to see as well. To give you guys some perspective, we actually had Ellen, the Ellen Show, run a similar fundraiser last year, and they raised just over $2 million. Not to say that's not a feat in itself, but still to see the reaction and the actual response from the Blizzard community as well as you guys watching to raise nearly $13 million is absolutely insane. And I cannot wait to see what comes away with Overwatch League playoffs this week as we do have semifinals Wednesday. And of course, upcoming weekend, we do have the grand finals. Who's going to be in it? Leave a comment down below. And to finish off, not too much going on in Rocket League news, at least with roster changes or tournaments coming up. We'll have some announcements coming Wednesday or Friday about that. But of course, we do have the three-year anniversary event is now live until the 23rd of July. Also, make sure to collect all your balloons, open up all your golden eggs, because we've seen amazing unlocks so far, and you can actually get a lot of customizable skins out there through the entire event. Now, also on top of that, you got the record itself, the event itself boasted a new record high of 46 million players worldwide. Uh, kind of amazing to see this actually brings the game itself into a top five esport throughout the entire world breaking 46 million players and just over 2.5 billion games played it's been amazing to see the progression of rocket league throughout this season or the last year itself and i cannot wait to see the continued growth in the future now from the esports talk show to all of you guys watching thank you for watching our very first episode of the esports news show we hope you guys all enjoyed if you guys want to follow us on social media contribute to the news or say what we missed or what we messed up feel free to leave a comment down below follow us on social media and we'll be back here every week monday wednesday and friday with all of your favorite esports news updates and changes so we hope you guys all enjoy and until next time we'll see you then